and welcome to this Learn Electrics video. The question is, just how do we calculate voltage drop in a ring final socket circuit? Let's begin with our basic ring circuit. The example that you can see here is made up of just five sockets and that will be perfect for us to understand voltage drop and circuit length calculations in these circuits. We've included a double socket to visually mark the midpoint for our calculations today. But in reality, any combination of singles and doubles is acceptable. We are going to keep things standard, so it is protected by the usual 32 amp circuit breaker and wired in 2.5 mm twin and earth cable. We can begin with the wiring regulations and regulation 433.1.204 tells us that for a 32 amp ring circuit the conductors, the line and neutral, must have a rating of at least 20 amps. It also tells us that for standard 70 degree twin and earth cable we should choose a size that is not less than 2.5 millimeters. The anticipated loading of the circuit, what we intend to plug into it, should not cause the current demand, IB, to exceed the cable rating, IZ, for long periods of time. Let's begin by putting some cable lengths and amps onto the circuit. We're installing 2.5 mm cable and each socket is 13 meters apart. This gives us a total cable run of 78 meters and a distance of 39 meters to the furthest point from the consumer unit, the double socket. Let us suppose that the circuit is fully loaded. We know that the furthest point, the double socket, will have a current demand of 20 amps in normal use and that the remaining 12 amps will be evenly distributed around the ring circuit. That is to say, each of the four single sockets will draw 3 amps per socket. If we add this up, we have a total loading of 32 amps and this is our IB. But the design regulations permit us to make allowances for the fact that not every piece of cable will be fully loaded. The cables near the consumer unit, yes, they will carry a high load, but the cables at the far end of the circuit will carry less current. We can, therefore, use what is called the average current for our ring circuit. If we have a fully loaded 32 amp circuit, what then is the average current? We made an assumption earlier that the furthest point of use, the midpoint, would have a 20 amp demand and that the remaining current is evenly distributed. We can use a little formula now. The full load current plus the current demand at the furthest point are added together and then divided by 2. This gives us 32 plus 20 which is 52. Divide 52 by 2 and we have our average current of 26 amps. If we look at this on the circuit drawing, we can see that the first section of the upper leg from the breaker will carry 16 amps of current, and so will the first section of the lower leg, another 16 amps. At the first socket on each leg, 3 amps will be tapped off. This leaves 13 amps for the second section, where another 3 amps is used. The final section to the double socket carries just 10 amps. As there are two legs feeding the double socket, it receives 10 amps from the upper leg and 10 amps from the lower leg, a total of 20 amps, which is what we stated at the beginning. Now, add up what the top and bottom first sections are carrying. Section 1 of the upper plus section 1 of the lower is 16 amps plus 16 amps, or the full 32 amps. The middle section, 13 amps plus 13 amps added together to give 26 amps. And finally, the end section, 10 plus 10 or 20 amps. You can see that the middle section is 26 amps, our average current. Let's start by calculating some maximum cable lengths. If we do this first, it is much easier to understand the voltage drop calculation. With a ring circuit, we have parallel resistances. There are two cables that run to the furthest point, which means that effectively the cable length can be halved. Two cables, half the length. 
2 divided by a half gives us 4. Now remember this number 4. We're going to use it in our calculations. We've shown on this slide the two standard formulas for voltage drop calculations. On the left in the blue box is the formula for radial circuits, which you should be familiar with. On the right in the yellow box we show the formula for ring circuits and you can see the number 4 that we've just worked out on the bottom row of this formula. If you remember from R1 plus R2 calculations we also divide by 4 for ring circuits. For our calculations we've agreed the cable will be standard 70 degree grey 2.5 mm twin and earth. From the tables in the regulations we found that the MVAM number for this cable is the number 18. This tells us that our 2.5 cable will lose 18 millivolts for every amp that flows through every meter of cable. The regulations also tell us that the maximum permitted volts drop for this type of circuit is 5% of 230 volts, which is 11.5 volts. Any volts drop above 11.5 volts may start to affect the efficiency and performance of appliances that are connected to it and the cables may also begin to overheat. Our maximum load is 32 amps and our average load is 26 amps. We said that we would calculate maximum lengths first. This is the standard formula for calculating the maximum length of a cable that will not take us over the maximum volt drop limit. In the box below we've shown what each symbol means. LVD will be our answer, the maximum length to not exceed the maximum voltage drop. VD max is the maximum permitted voltage drop, 11.5 volts for sockets. IB is the load current. MVAM, as we said earlier, is the voltage drop in millivolts per amp per meter. 4 is the parallel circuit factor we calculated earlier and 1000 is used to convert millivolts back to volts so that we can compare it directly to the 11.5 volts maximum. If we calculate the maximum length of a circuit without averaging the load current we will put the following numbers into our equation. You can see that we have used 32 amps, the full load, on the bottom row of the formula. Calculate this and we have a maximum circuit length of 79.9 metres. Above this circuit length and our voltage drop will exceed the permitted limit of 11.5 volts. We will do the same calculation but this time with the average load current, the 26 amps that we calculated previously. 26 amps replaces the 32 amps and we have a maximum length this time of 98.3 meters. This is almost 20 meters extra circuit length possible, a 25% increase. Hopefully you can see the significant benefit to using averaged load currents to maximum load currents. Okay, but what if the cables are already installed? We can look next at calculating actual volts drop. Let us suppose that we have determined the circuit length to be 98 meters. Using our average load current, what is the actual voltage drop in this ring circuit? The formula to use is the one that begins with VD for voltage drop. This is the correct formula for ring circuits because it also includes the number 4 that we talked about a few moments ago. The data to enter is shown in the green box. We have put the numbers into the formula, now we just need a calculator. And out pops our answer 11.47 volts. A 98 meter ring circuit in 2.5 mm twin and earth with an average load current of 26 amps will have a voltage drop that is just inside the permissible maximum. And how easy is that? If we had used the maximum load current, what would the volts drop have been? Significantly higher. I hope you can see how useful it is to do the calculation this way. So, what have we done? We had a fully loaded ring final socket circuit protected by a 32 amp circuit breaker 
and wired in 2.5mm twin and earth as recommended by the wiring regulations. We assumed the average load current by adding the full load current to the load at the furthest point and dividing this by 2, which gave us 26 amps in this example. From the tables in the wiring regulations, we know that the MVAM number for this cable is 18 and we also know from the regs that a maximum volts drop of 5% is permitted for a ring circuit and this equates to 11.5 volts. We then used the appropriate formula to calculate either the volts drop or the maximum length for the circuit. Practice this a few times and it will become a powerful skill in your mental toolbox. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable. By clicking on subscribe below you will have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you'll also ensure that you don't miss our next twice weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us too. We do appreciate it and it does make us feel that all our effort is worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. We also have Tech Tips articles on our website which can be found at www.learnelectrics.com Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.